emotion is emotion. So if you're sat down all day at your desk, the likelihood is your emotions will be quite negative. And this is particularly pertinent today because we're all in lockdown. We're all spending vast amounts of time inside. And as a consequence, we're likely to be more anxious because the, the way you move has an effect on your emotions. The way you think leads then to an emotional change, which then leads to a change in your muscles. That's why scientists have shown that if you can force yourself to smile in the mirror every day, then that's likely to have a subliminal effect on you. That's going to release chemicals, even if it's forced. And another example is a lot of people who are anxious, their shoulders are forward, their backs arched, and they're almost submitting to the situation they're in. Jordan Peterson compared lobsters and humans as they have similar uh, neurotransmitters. And when lobsters are defeated, their serotonin levels reduce significantly. And that's the same with humans. When our serotonin reduces, that's when we become more prone to anxiety and that's when our body posture inevitably changes. If you slump around with the same bearing that characterizes a defeated lobster, people will assign you to a lower status. Then your brain will not produce as much serotonin, making you more anxious. If you present yourself as defeated, then people will react to you as if you're losing. Jordan Peterson said that standing up physically also implies standing up metaphysically. You take a step forward to take your place in the dominance hierarchy and occupy your territory like a lobster, manifesting your willingness to defend and expand it. People are often bullied because they won't fight back. This happens frequently to people who are compassionate and self-sacrificing. It happens to people who are, have decided for one reason or another that all forms of aggression, including feelings of anger, are morally wrong. People with sensitivity to petty tyranny and over-aggressive competitiveness restrict themselves of all emotions that might rise to such things. And this is what I was talking about earlier with moralizing. It's important that you accept that you're human and that you need to defend yourself. Sometimes the pain and anxiety of someone who's been bullied can last, outlast the actual bullying because they become so anxious and they shield themselves by avoiding eye contact because that could be interpreted as a dominance challenge. They start crouching their back because they assume a naturally submissive posture because they don't want to attract any genuine attention. And when people who have a proclivity to bully, they see people like this who assume a, a naturally submissive position and they, they're more likely to you know, feed off them and bully them more. So it's important that you change your posture in a, a way that you can be, def you can defend yourself and that you can be seen as a threat. And it's important that we embrace this as humans so that we don't become like a crouched lobster. Scientists at Harvard University have shown that if you do a power stance like this, can you see? If you do this for three minutes, it'll completely uplift your emotions. And when we tap into our emotional system, which is called the limbic system, we're able to change the way we think and changing the way we think can change the way we act. So that's why a lot of people who go to the gym and who are quite large after working out for years have this confidence because their mind and body are so connected. So signs of a poor posture and poor non-verbal communication is no eye contact, fidgeting, compulsive behavior, inc inconsistent behavior, shoulders forward, back arched, your, the way you speak as well. If you're particularly quiet, then that shows you don't have that confidence and being bold and loud shows confidence. But even if you feel that way, even if you feel anxious like a lot of you do, tapping into these physiological teachings can actually change the way we feel. It can increase our confidence, even if we feel anxious at the time. So, for example, it's about forcing yourself to do it before you actually feel those emotions because the, emotion, the emotions almost lag behind your actions. Your emotions are a consequence of your actions. So if you are... If you suddenly put your shoulders back like this 
and you have firm eye contact with the person in front of you and you stop fidgeting, you're facing them square on, you're not distracting yourself, that will inevitably lead to more confidence, better emotions, the release of more neurotransmitters in the long term. It, it takes time, it's about having faith that it'll, it will prevail if you can maintain those types of habits in conversations. And it, it doesn't even have to be in a conversation with someone, it can just be in your room. We spend a lot of our time, time at, at our desk at the moment, sitting there hunched over, you know, having a bad posture because we're not enjoying the work we're doing and we're just feeling quite anxious. But if we can suddenly put our shoulders back like this and have our legs spread, then we'll naturally feel more confident and, we'll, and our actions will be more confident and bold and we'll be more productive, we'll be more self-disciplined and it has a rippling effect like that. Thank you.